Tylus is also a, a highly versatile software which uh, enables you to add tasks and uh, customize their appearance purely aided by your mouse. So if we click on the insert task icon in the uh, insert object toolbar, we can choose from a number of templates which are at our disposal. The uh, templates themselves uh, have a certain shape, have a certain color, line style, and automatically uh, generate um, text descriptions um, along the actual task itself. However, in uh, this specific case, uh, we will uh, choose a, uh, a task which is not predefined, therefore we will click on None. And uh, using the mouse, we will uh, insert or draw a task from 0 to 2,700 meters. Once you have drawn your task in the main working area, Tylos allows you to change the data in two different ways. The first way is by changing the information in the preset toolbar at the top of your screen. For example, duration may change to uh, 20 days and the length may change to 2,800 meters. And you can see that the amendments that have been made are automatically adopted uh, graphically. And the other way of uh, amending data is purely and simply by grabbing the, uh, the edit lines and uh, changing the duration of the task and reducing the length of the task accordingly. And then, as you can see, all amendments that have been made graphically uh, using uh, the mouse uh, have automatically been changed in the preset toolbar at the top of the screen. By moving from the display view tab to the general view tab in the details toolbar, we can insert a name for the task in the main working area. And as we can see here, the task ID for this task is automatically generated. However, it can be changed later by the user himself. Once we hit the return button, we can see in the preset toolbar at uh, the top left hand side of your screen, the name, the name change of the task has been automatically updated. Now that we have given the task a name, uh, let's move on to the next phase of changing the appearance of the task. The uh, easiest way to do this is by clicking on the display view tab in the details toolbar and clicking on the display type menu. A display type uh, determines the shape of how the task should appear. So in this present state, uh, we have a, a simple line, which is purely just a task line. Um, a parallelogram, for example, adds a distance lag to the, uh, the shape it represents uh, in the working area. By highlighting the task again, it will take us back to the, uh, the display view tab. And uh, we can choose a, a rectangle, uh, for example. A rectangle indicates the work that is being uh, carried out in uh, a specific area without um, the work crew uh, moving uh, beyond its confines. This is uh, usually the case with, uh, with bridge work or road crossings. So uh, I will go back to my initial setting. I will choose uh, a simple line and uh, will then proceed on to the uh, task line box. Uh, this basically uh, enables me to uh, change the, uh, the line style. In this case, I will choose uh, 05, line parallel. Uh, and I can proceed to uh, changing uh, the color. Uh, in this example, yellow, bright yellow in this specific case. However, uh, I think I will change it back to black as it uh, provides better clarity uh, in the main working area. Now that we have added a task and customized its appearance, let's now add a task annotation. There are two ways, basically, of doing this. The first way is by uh, using the, uh, the inset uh, object toolbar uh, by clicking on the, uh, the icon insert multi-line text fields and uh, drawing a small rectangle anywhere in the main working area. By uh, 
Clicking on the multi-line text view tab in the details toolbar at the bottom of your screen, you can feel free to, uh, to type in any name or information you feel may be relevant um, to the actual task and click on the main working area. That's how easy it is to, uh, to successfully insert uh, a task annotation. Another way of adding a task annotation is by clicking on the actual task. Using your right mouse button, click on Add Task Annotation in the context menu. This gives us the opportunity to uh, insert uh, multi-line text so we can uh, determine whether the uh, text appears at the start, end or uh, centre uh, of the task. We will uh, choose uh, the centre here. Uh, we will also uh, define that we would like the uh, text annotation to slope with the task. So if we uh, click on the Apply Slope Task option here, uh, moving on to the box position, this enables us to uh, adjust uh, the text uh, in relation to the task. So we shall click on BC, which stands for Bottom Centre. Now moving on to the edit text field, there are two different ways I can insert my text. The first way is by hand. So if I type in today's project, for example, uh, or the second way being using the F8 keys, which I'm sure we have become familiar with by now. So by applying the F8 key, I can choose from my drop down menu not only text, in the shape and form of uh, a name. By also uh, applying the F8 key, I can uh, choose variables uh, from the drop down menu. And by clicking on OK, I have now, with the help of my mouse, added another task annotation. The next phase of our Tylos tutorial deals with task calculation. In order to calculate a task, please highlight it first. Proceed to the Calculation View tab in the Details toolbar and proceed to the Calculator drop-down menu and choose Work Rate. The Quantity field in this specific example uh, is very important as it measures the volume of work that has to be completed. So for this example, insert 27,000 and uh, hit return and you can see that the planned work rate is 210.937 square meters per hour and this communicates to all project participants the level of productivity which has to be achieved in order to finish the job on time. Tylos can also calculate the duration based on a given work rate. So by changing the value in the Calculate field to Duration, we can activate the Planned Work Rate field, shown here. So uh, let's pretend for a moment that uh, the work rate is uh, 240 square meters per hour. And now you can see that the, uh, the task duration has been updated. It is now 14 days. And looking at the task in your main working area, you can see that it has been graphically updated too. Over and above this, the duration can also be calculated based on the task length. So if we proceed to set quantity by field, choose task length, and change the quantity factor to 12, hitting return, we can see that uh, the duration of the task has now changed to 17 days as opposed to 14. Uh, this amendment has been adopted graphically too in the working area. And of course, it is uh, important to uh, note that uh, further calculation options uh, for quantity based on uh, profiles with exact planning data, for example, uh, will be shown later on during other tutorials. Changing your task coordinates in Tylos is relatively simple. By clicking on the Coordinates View tab in uh, your Details toolbar at the bottom of your page, um, by clicking on the Start or End distance in meters, you can choose basically any 
distance or start station grid point from the uh, combo selector on my right hand side. We shall uh, choose the, the crossing at 1200 meters and by doing so you can see that uh, not only the duration uh, of my task has changed but also the distance and end coordinates have been amended accordingly. Now using your mouse drag the edit lines back to zero. The task end is snapped to the zero point as I'm sure you've just noticed and this makes the precise positioning of task a lot easier in the drawing mode. Snapping for example can be set to a constant value i.e. every hundred meters but also to any grid line defined. Before proceeding to saving the task as a task template let's change its direction first. By going to the coordinates view tab in the details toolbar at the bottom of our screen please click on the change of direction. Moving back to the task itself, click on your right mouse button and choose Save as Template. Now, as it is in the nature of linear scheduling that repetitive work uh, is carried out and performed uh, at different locations uh, along the distance axis, uh, it makes common working sense basically to save the task as a task template for future usage in my project. So, by choosing Earthworks and create a new template beneath selected. By clicking on this option I can then choose a name which I'm happy to do so here and by clicking on OK and by OK again I have saved my task as a task template. I'm now going to show you how to insert a task based on the task template. Go to the insert object toolbar click on the insert task icon and the preset toolbar will show you a context menu that you can choose the task template from. So by clicking on topsoil stripping today and drawing your task from say 2700 to 4000 and releasing your left mouse button we can see by clicking on the details toolbar uh, on the left hand side of our uh, screen we can see that um, the top cell stripping task has been uh, inserted uh, accordingly. No, uh, no additional uh, entry of data uh, is required um, at this point because basically uh, we can see that um, the, uh, the dates and the distance and um, the uh, calculation model have all been uh, adopted um, as the task has been uh, saved as a template and uh, this is an easy way of, uh, of carrying out repetitive work uh, in your main working area. I'm now going to show you how to add a task using the Tylos Explorer. Proceed to the uh, insert task icon in the insert objects toolbar click on this please and then proceed into the Tylos uh, Explorer click on library task libraries task templates and please choose Earthworks. Let's for example say that uh, the topsoil stripping task has been completed and you would now like to remove the soil beneath it. By clicking on uh, the soil removal R task draw the task from say uh, 1700 to, uh, to zero. Then click on the view tab calculation in the details toolbar and proceed to insert the desired quantity. In this case uh, 45,400 cubic meters and hit return. You can see now, based on the details toolbar and the, uh, the information therein, that the duration of the task has now been updated to 35. And if we click on the main working area and scroll down our screen slightly, we can see now that uh, everything has been amended perfectly and is now in place. Before we move on to the next stage of our project, let's just adjust the size of our screen for a moment, please. By going to the main toolbar 
and choosing 80% size of your screen and hitting the return button scroll up to the top of your screen and adjust the size accordingly. Now that's a lot better. You may feel after adjusting the size of the screen that you may have to adjust the size of the task annotation. To do this, simply click on the task annotation with your left mouse button and proceed to changing the size to what you would prefer. Having made these minor adjustments to the screen, I would now like to insert another task. In doing so, proceed to the Insert Object Toolbar, click on the Insert Task icon and choose from the Tylos Explorer Soil Installation. Moving into the working area, press your left mouse button down and draw the task from 1700 to say 3000. Having made these minor adjustments, let's now concentrate on filling the soil that we have removed in our former task, the 45,400 cubic meters, to a different section in the working area. In order to do this, click on the Insert Objects toolbar, for example, the Insert Task icon, and choose Soil Installation from the Tylos Explorer. Returning to the main working area, draw the task from, for example, 1700 meters to 3000. The task we have just inserted is a so-called hammock task. A hammock task is defined in a way that it receives all the information, i.e. duration and quantity, from a subtask. By going to the details toolbar on the bottom left hand side of your screen, click on the view tab, categories and structure, Moving over to the task and hammock box, click on the plus sign, click on the task field, select soil removal, and you can see that the hammock task has successfully adopted the soil 45,400 cubic meters, as well as the duration of the task that it has been assigned to. Tylos has all the necessary features of an advanced project management system already built in uh, and due to this it allows you to create links between activities and reschedule them. Linking activities is relatively easy. Click on the, uh, the task at hand and using your mouse click on the linking tool. Dragging it over to the task that you would like to link it with you will see an anchor symbol. Releasing your left mouse button you will have finalized this process and you can see in the details toolbar at the bottom of your screen that uh, Tylos has automatically recognized the, uh, the link type and this option also gives you the uh, opportunity to check that your settings are correct. By taking a closer look at the, the Tylos details toolbar uh, we can see that uh, Tylos supports uh, uh, a number of uh, different link types like start-start, uh, start-finish, uh, finish-finish and uh, over and above that uh, calculate um, the meeting point. Uh, that means uh, two work crews um, working from uh, different sides. If we uh, go over to the calculate lag uh, by field, clicking on the, uh, the arrow, we can see that uh, it is possible to, to set lags in, in calendar time but uh, it is also possible to create um, distance uh, lags too. However, um, this is uh, something that uh, we will discuss uh, later on uh, in our tutorial. Another effective way of linking unlinked tasks is by using your right mouse button. So in order to do so, highlight the task top soil stripping, please click on it, and using your uh, control button, click on soil removal. Using your right mouse button, using the context menu, choose linked unlinked tasks as the option here. And as you can see the unlinked tasks have now been linked and uh, viewing the details toolbar at the bottom of the screen the link type is start start. Uh, this is simply because uh, both tasks overlap in time. If this was uh, not the case then a finish finish link uh, would have been created 
instead. I mentioned a moment ago that Tylos allows you to calculate special distance based slacks. Uh, we have two tasks here, topsoil stripping and soil removal. And um, as the one starts at 2700 and the other one commences at 1700, we will require a special lag. The distance to successor lag in this specific case allows both tasks to be carried out by different crews simultaneously, albeit based on a distance. So if I insert 250 meters as the required distance, clicking on my main working area, right mouse button, and clicking on reschedule. By going back to my time lag, I can see that it now has changed. And the time lag is now 7.88 days. So this basically means that I have, based on my distance lag, calculated that my soil removal task can commence 7.88 days after the topsoil stripping has commenced at 2,700 meters. This simple exercise has shown you that there is more to the Tylos algorithm than just linear scheduling. If we click on the main working area and proceed to the details toolbar at the bottom of our screen, clicking on the display view tab and then on total float, free float and critical path, we can see now that Tylos has adopted the critical path rescheduling method based on the CPM methodology graphically too. We are now going to insert further tasks, but before we can do so, we need to split the screen. Using your mouse, uh, proceed to the uh, top right hand side of the screen along the scroll bar up until you see the, uh, the spacer symbol. Dragging the spacer symbol down using your mouse and releasing it will enable you to uh, split the screen into two separate views. If I proceed to the, uh, the bottom view, clicking on my school bar, I can then adjust the size of the, uh, the main working area where I would like to insert further tasks. I'm sure you are familiar with this function as uh, Excel and uh, other applications enable you to do the same. And uh, it is also possible using Tylos to uh, split the screen horizontally or vertically. I'm now going to show you how to uh, insert task groups because it's a, a general assumption that linear scheduling is applied when work crews perform their work one after the other uh, along the right of way. So we go to the insert objects toolbar, uh, click on the insert task group icon. Moving to the, uh, the main working area, please draw a rectangle using your left mouse button and by releasing it, a dialog will appear on your screen. The easiest way to insert and uh, select a task group is by coordinates. So if we go to the, uh, the method field, by choosing by coordinates and entering, for example, in this specific case, the start coordinates 2700 and perhaps 1000. 200 for the end coordinates and then click on OK. Before we proceed to uh, linking the trench opening and pipe laying tasks with uh, the soil removal task, let's go to the main toolbar in the top of our screen and click on the reschedule icon. And we can see now that uh, again Tylos has graphically uh, adopted the changes and portrays them now in the main working area. So if we go to uh, the soil removal task, click on this please, and grasping the, uh, the linking tool using your uh, left mouse button, uh, drag it over to the trench opening tasks, there is the anchor symbol, and releasing the mouse we can now see that uh, in the, uh, the details toolbar at the bottom of the screen, we now have a, a finish start link type between the two tasks, soil removal and trench opening. 
Now that we have uh, linked the formerly unlinked tasks with one another, let's go to the main toolbar again and uh, click on the, uh, the reschedule icon. Uh, proceeding back to uh, our main working area by clicking on the, uh, the actual link itself, we can see in the details toolbar that uh, the distance has been synchronized to uh, start and uh, end distance. And we can see that uh, the synchronized speed has also uh, been activated. If we uh, then proceed to the, uh, the trench opening task, and for example, we would like to change the, uh, the work rate to 15 meters uh, per hour by uh, clicking on the main working area again and returning to the, uh, the reschedule icon. By clicking on this, uh, I have now basically calculated the new positions uh, based on the length and the new work rate. Tylos also allows you to copy any selection of tasks using the uh, copy and uh, paste function from Windows. However, there is a much easier way using the advanced copy function and that is basically by clicking on a task of your choice, uh, pressing the uh, control button on your keyboard and selecting another task. Uh, in this example it's the pipe laying task 2. Using your right mouse button and choosing task creation copy task. This uh, function will also enable you not only to copy the tasks but also to determine their coordinates. For example up here I can uh, choose 4000 as the start coordinate, 2700 as the, uh, the end coordinate and I can also uh, choose the, uh, the destination date i.e. The, uh, the start date too. So by choosing this option and clicking on OK and then clicking on my main working area. I have now successfully copied a group of tasks and in doing so I have also applied different coordinates so this task has now been copied and appears at different coordinates in your main working area. So now if I proceed to the right hand side of the screen and by clicking on the spacer symbol and moving upwards to the top of my screen you can see using the scroll bar that I now have completed my first time location diagram using this tutorial today.